Hey, what's up everyone? This is gonna be a video on how you can successfully create a bandsaw riser block using wood instead of buying a factory metal one um, that tend to be expensive and actually in my case didn't even exist for this model um, of bandsaw, an older Craftsman one horsepower. But I'm just gonna give you some tips and tricks to make your process go faster than mine. So let's get started. All right, unfortunately, the first thing we need to do is some math to figure out how big do you want your riser block to be. The logic I used, and I'm assuming that you'll probably end up doing as well, is I wanted to build up my riser block to a level that would take me from my given bandsaw blade length up to a new one that was readily available from the store. So I wouldn't have to build, to some, build some custom blades every time I wanted a new blade. Um, in my case, I had an 80 inch blade on the current setup and I wanted to move up to 93 and a half because you can buy those at like Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards and get them offline fairly easily. And the way I did that was I, I found online an equation that was, um, so, whoop, how do I back up here? Um, I'll also be <laughs> using this little pen tool for the first time. So hopefully this goes all right. Um, the equation though is saw blade length equals pi r1 plus pi r2 plus 2c and I'll explain what these are and put it in the show notes as well. Um, saw, blade, saw blade length is fairly self-explanatory. Then r is the radius of the top wheel, r1 is the radius of the top wheel, r2 is the radius of the bottom wheel. Um, in most cases these are going to be identical numbers. And then C is the distance between the center post of the top wheel and the center post of the bottom wheel. I wanted to figure out what C was for my uh, bandsaw without just measuring this because I assumed with tensioning it and loosening it, I might not get the true number I needed. So the first step I did was solve for C. And I got in my 80 inch saw blade with pi, oops, not very good here on this little writer. Uh, six, which is half of my 12 inch in diameter wheel times pi six plus two C, which is what I was trying to solve for. When I did the math here, I got my C equaled 21.16. Let me check my notes here just to make sure that's right. Yeah, 21.16 and then I used what blade length I wanted to move to, in this case 93.5, and the wheels didn't change size, so this is all the same, plus 2C, and I got C equaled 27.91. Now this gives me the distance between here and here, and the 21.16 was the distance between here and here. If you take the difference between those two, you also get the amount you want to increase or make the riser block effectively. So when you take the difference between these two center post distances, I got 6.75 inches. So 6.75 inches is how big I made my riser block. Your situation might be different. You might have 14 inch uh, wheels. You may have a different center post length. A variety of things might be different on yours, but this equation here should give you a good starting point and then you can use whatever logic you want to determine how much you want to increase uh, or, or make your riser block. Couple considerations. Um, one again, saw blade lengths are fairly uniform in what you can get at box stores. Um, so if you go outside of those norms, you'll have to custom order blades, which will be a pain. And then also you want to take into consideration your motor power, in my case is one horsepower. If you made this infinitely large, obviously you wouldn't have the motor strength to turn the wheels and to cut the wood. So you don't want to go too extravagantly large with your riser block, given that your original motor was built for the size it was originally. But in this case, I moved up 6.75 inches into a 93 and a half inch blade, and the motor power is strong enough to cover the vast majority of this increased um, cutting capacity. Now we're gonna move on to some of the technical aspects of the build, just so that you can uh, skip some of the pain that I had in building this. All right, I'm gonna move into some of the teardown tips. Um, unfortunately, the footage I had was kinda crummy, so we're gonna have to use these screenshots with this little drawing tool. 
Um, but the first step you're obviously going to want to do is unplug your tool and then um, remove your blade. I think it's still showing here in this instance, but you'll have to take that off, obviously. You'll also want to take off this blade cover guide here. And I don't think I had to, but you may need to get rid of this uh, blade uh, guide here as well and the tear down. But um, I would leave it on there if you can. Next thing you need to do is just expose the bolt that holds your two pieces together. In my case here, this was uh, obviously a really old piece that this had never been removed, so it was stuck in place. I had to use penetrating oil uh, multiple times and let it sit there for a couple of days. And then the clearance on either side here is almost impossible to get a full size um, pliers in there. So in order to hold it, I use these uh, locking pliers. This side was bigger, so I was able to get the uh, kind of traditional ones in here. And then to actually loosen it, I had to use these needle nose locking pliers to get in here and actually turn. Uh, but this is the most challenging part of the whole process is you're literally turning this at like millimeters at a time because there's just no clearance in here to get that bolt off. And I didn't have a big enough socket wrench to get this off because it's a fairly large bolt. Uh, you may have that and it might be easier process for you. The other thing I advise is the second you start loosening it, I didn't think this through even though it's pretty self-explanatory, is this part wants to fall this way and this part is, is static obviously here, but this is constantly pulling down this way as soon as you loosen it. So you really want to get a partner or a, a person to help you at least just hold this in place in some way, shape or form so that you can loosen this without it just getting progressively harder as this thing leans further and further over. Seems really easy, but when you're moving at such a slow rate, you don't realize why it continues to get hard. Um, so just something that I ran into um, and something for you to consider. Um, those are the two big things from this step. I'm going to go to the next screenshot and show you some other tips to consider. All right. Now, again, sorry having to use these screenshots here, but once you eventually get this part removed from the top here and you can set it aside, uh, you're going to notice that on most uh, bandsaws, there is a little dimple uh, or like a little knob on the base here that fits into a little dimple in the top portion up here. So these insert into a little void in the top uh, frame so that it sits there snug. We're going to have to account for that in our riser block build. Um, and the way we, the way I did that at least was um, first I created the riser block um, by laminating a two by four with a four by four to get the right length from here to here. And then I used a table saw to cut it roughly to the dimensions that I have here. And then I took a piece of graph paper and I punched it over top of those little dimples or those little those little nubs and drew out the voids and the outline of that piece here. And I knew the reverse of that would be true uh, for the top part there. So where this little knobs are, there would be voids in the top. So I created um, or I transferred that um, stencil onto the top and the bottom of my new riser block. And then on the top, I drilled um, holes where those little dimples should be. And then the bottom, I also drilled holes where those knobs should be. And I'll show you how I accounted for that. And then at the mouth of the bolt opening here, I drilled a hole that was big enough to handle the new bolt that I got. So that is another consideration I didn't bring up in the first video is this bolt here, in my case was I think like three and a half inches. I needed a bolt then that had six or three and a half inches plus the 6.75 that I added for the riser block. So I got a bolt that that was that size and just as a heads up, those can um, get, you know, in the te high teens, low twenties of dollars just because they're such an unusual uh, length and size, but um, you can find those online and you'll just want to make sure that you get the bolt and the nut and two washers for either side, or you can reuse the washers that you had. And, and the nut for that matter from the original setup. So you might just need a bolt to make this work here if you get the same diameter bolt. Then for the bolt hole, I used a Forstner bit and because I didn't have a Forstner bit long enough, I had to use the, this little template to drill down this way halfway and then flip it over and drill upward halfway. So then by the end of it, I basically had 
a riser block that had a hole in the center up here and then it had a little hole here a little hole here and then the same was true down here then in order to recreate these little knobs that we have here I just took a piece of all thread that was about a quarter inch in diameter because that's what these were and I cut them off to be about uh, double the length of the depth of this hole so this hole was probably a half an inch deep I then cut a piece that was probably three quarters of an inch deep of the uh, all thread and then punched it in there so I had about a quarter inch standing up here and a quarter inch standing up here and that basically recreated this setup here so when I brought back this piece, the little holes here would sit on top of these little uh, nibs here, nubs here that I created with the all thread. Down here, I just left these holes vacant and that's where they sat here, where the top would have originally sat. So that was the, um, the build process of the riser block itself. Uh, biggest considerations in summary are making sure that you drill down um, or have a Forstner bit long enough that's at least half the distance of your block so you can drill upwards and downwards and meet in the middle. And then also price out your bolt um, and try to get the same diameter as the original bolt so you can reuse the hardware, the nut, and the washers on either side. And then finally, you want to make sure that you have consideration for these little knobs here and the little voids on the top part of your um, top armature here. Okay, so now that you have your riser block completely made here, um, it's just a matter of reassembly. And just like disassembly, I think it would be virtually impossible to do this without the help of a partner. Um, what you're going to need is someone to lift this up so that you can put your bolt and washer through the hole you drilled through your riser block. Um, in the original setup, there's a little cutout on the top and bottom where you could just slide the bolt in, but obviously you don't have that here. You just have the, uh, the hole cut out. So you'll need to put the bolt in first with the washer, uh, get that up and over the lip of the base plate here and get everything lined up with the voids and the little uh, all thread nibs and then get everything lined up down here and then have your partner um, set it back down, make sure everything's lined up, and then you'll throw a washer and the nut on down here, and then um, with some patience, because there's not a lot of clearance again, you'll have to just tighten this up and get it um, as tight as you can, as you can get it. Uh, I was able to get this to the point where I feel that this is just as rigid as the original setup. I can't really tell a difference in the structural soundness of this setup versus the original. Um, you're able to get that really nice and tight. So uh, nothing to worry about there. There are, however, um, three uh, cons or shortcomings that I wanted to call out just for sake of transparency uh, before you get started on this. And I think actually most of them are probably true even if you bought a factory metal riser block, but just something to consider. Uh, the first being that this um, saw blade guard over here uh, that you had for the old setup is not going to fit the new setup. So I was lucky enough to have a 3D printer and I just 3D printed um, three or four parts here and super glued them together to make my new blade guard. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer and actually what I almost did was take the old blade guard and cut it in half and then take a little scrap piece of wood that's long enough to account for the new blade length and glue it in between the two old old blade guard pieces and then take the piece of wood and run it over um, a table saw so that you have the kerf width behind there to account for the blade running behind there um, and so that you'll you'll have a blade guard that's basically three pieces the old uh, blade guard a little piece of wood and the old blade guard so a workaround you can use even if you don't have a 3D printer. Um, the next shortcoming is now the guide post is too short. Um, to, to work on anything that is less than 6.75 inches, um, you now cannot bring the guide post down to the workpiece like you're supposed to. So you don't really have that counter pressure to play with and to be able to cut quickly. Um, definitely not a deal breaker. You just simply need to slow down your cut rate um, I can basically perform all the same actions I could previously 
just when they're smaller work pieces, I just tend to go a little bit slower without that counter pressure from the guide post down as low as it should be. Um, so I don't get any sort of bend in the blade. Um, so consideration for smaller work pieces. Uh, very similarly, the, uh, an additional shortcoming is the new capacity, um, like I mentioned before, is definitely bigger than the original motor was accounting for. Um, so I think um, if yours is anything like mine, you're gonna have to slow up the feed rate as you get into bigger bigger pieces of wood and resawing at closer to the full capacity. I've never actually had a piece of wood that was as big as the full capacity, but I definitely have gone up, say, 75% of the new capacity with no problems. It's just, again, a matter of slowing down the feed rate. Not a deal breaker at all. Probably not even really noticeable. Probably wouldn't hurt to slow down anyway. Um, but definitely slower than I used to originally cut with my, my bandsaw. And then finally, um, I don't think it's necessary, necessarily a bad thing, but you're, you're pretty much gonna be viewing this as a permanent solution. This is too big of an undertaking to put on and take off that this is not really a flexible solution to um, constantly be adjusting or constantly be you know, going back to the old blade length and the new blade length and, and whatnot. You're pretty much gonna put it on and like it and leave it that way or you're gonna end up hating it and taking it off and leaving it that way. Um, so again, that's, that's gonna be the same even if you bought a factory metal riser block, but just something to consider. Um, this is not a, a back and forth type solution. This is a, a once and done type deal. But other than that, um, definitely, definitely a great solution here and a cheaper solution by doing a DIY riser block. I hope this helps you. Thanks a lot for watching and good luck.